as possible and then use them to try to understand why the plane went down. Basically take an inventory, uh, see uh, how they all fit together and uh, to account for any missing pieces. Uh, the initial uh, examination uh, is to determine if all the control surfaces of the aircraft were functioning normally. No names have been released, and the sheriff's office will remain out here overnight, keeping the scene secure in this investigation. The NTSB should have its initial report out in about 10 days. In Pahokee, Andrew Lafome, ABC Action News. ABC Action News will be following this story as we go into the weekend. You can expect a push alert when we learn the identities of the victims and if we learn anything new about how that plane went down. Good evening, everybody, and weather temperatures right now have already cooled into the lower 50s in Citrus and Hernando County. Most of the area, though, mid to upper 60s, so for the third straight day, a lot colder in those northern counties than everywhere else. Overnight, future cast shows partly cloudy to clear skies. You'll wake up to sunny skies, still some upper 40s to low 50s up north, but at least we won't have to worry about any rain or clouds, at least until maybe later on in the day, when I still think there could be a few showers popping up east of I-75. Temperature wise, very warm to start your Saturday. Most of us in the 50s, maybe some upper 40s in our extreme northern counties elsewhere, right around the 60 degree mark under partly cloudy skies. So as warm as temperatures will be, those rain chances begin to bump up just a touch later on this weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Isabel? Dennis, thank you. New at 11, a grand jury is returning a 16-count indictment against actor Jussie Smollett. The former star of Vampire is accused of making a false police report claiming he was attacked by two men, but investigators do not believe his story. He was fired from the hit TV show after being arrested last month. A local sheriff's deputy is forced to shoot after being attacked by dogs, this all while trying to serve a homeowner with an eviction notice. His body cam captures it. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to show you that deputy shooting the dog, but these are the moments that led up to it. You can see as he's walking towards that door, both dogs came charging towards him. He immediately draws his gun and lets off at least two rounds at the dogs. Police say there were no warning signs on the property warning of aggressive dogs. ABC Action News obtaining new video tonight showing the seconds right before a stolen car crashes into a Clearwater home. Take a look. A nearby home security camera catches that white Kia you see there speeding down the street. Deputies say a 16 year old was behind the wheel. He lost control and hit the house on Eastville Drive just before midnight. I come running outside, seen a bunch of teenagers trying to run away, started chasing them. I was definitely, um, I was angry. Um, I was in total shock. And tonight we're learning that teen was on probation from another grand theft auto charge. He had a 13 year old inside the car. They were not hurt and actually came back to the home to get their backpacks and cell phones. President Donald Trump is spending the weekend at his Mar-a-Lago resort after traveling to see the damage for himself from a violent tornado that hit Alabama. Nearly two dozen lives were taken when that twister hit the small town on Sunday. The president observed a moment of silence at white wooden crosses that stood in remembrance of each of the victims. New tonight, Johns Hopkins Old Children's Hospital in St. Pete is being given more time to make things right. Federal inspectors found immediate threats to patient health and safety during an inspection earlier this year. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is threatening to terminate its contract with the hospital if the fixes are not made by April 11th. It had given the hospital until February the 15th to become compliant. One of the men seen in that viral shark dragging video from 2017 checked himself into the Hillsborough County Jail for the weekend. Michael Wenzel's first weekend behind bars. This begins his 10 day sentence. Wenzel taking a plea deal, changing his plea to guilty. Part of that plea deal, he will only serve his time behind bars on weekends. A local woman accidentally cuts off her fingers just weeks before she's set to marry the love of her life. Tonight, she tells ABC Action News reporter Julie Salamone about the doctors who made wearing her ring possible. Immediately, I pulled up on the lever to get the wedge to go back up. Miranda Rosimus says she looked away for a few seconds. She did not feel any pain at first, but realized she sliced off three of her fingers. I used the log splitter. I've used it. Millions of times, never had an issue, and I looked away for 10 seconds. She typically cuts wood for family camping trips. This is the piece of wood she was cutting when the accident happened nearly four months ago. I jumped up and was like, oh my God, my fingers, you know, my fingers are off. I ran inside, ran past my husband. Rosam has spent nearly a week in intensive care. She is amazed at how her left hand looks months later. These three, and they 
like basically right there where that line was. Dr. Michael Van Vliet with Blake Medical Center reattached the 23 year old's fingers, including her ring finger. In this video from Blake Medical Center, he talks about handling complex issues. What's special is that we don't turn any patients down, first of all, no matter what the, the situation is, we're going to take care of it. Rosamus got married about two months ago. She says getting her nails painted meant so much. I couldn't wear my ring up until the day of the wedding because my fingers were still swollen. She goes to weekly therapy to regain strength and motion in her fingers. Looking back at wedding photos, to have and to hold carries a new meaning. I was amazed. I didn't think I was going to have my fingers back. Reporting in Manatee County, Julie Salmon, ABC Action News. Racing is underway in downtown St. Petersburg. Action Air 1 here flying over the Firestone Grand Prix track today as practice sessions got started. This weekend of racing all leads up to the main event on Sunday afternoon. Businesses in downtown hope to capitalize on all the action and many of them need every dollar they can get. We have a Grand Prix sale. Uh, we tell our customers that downtown is definitely open for business on Grand Prix weekend. Race organizers say the Grand Prix is Pinellas County's largest spectator event of the year. In all, organizers say the race accounts for $40 million in economic impact. We have everything you need to know about the Grand Prix. Just head to abcactionnews.com for a complete breakdown of the race schedule, tickets, and road closures. So ahead, objecting the message, the Florida school bus aide caught on camera taking a polarizing hat off the head of a teen. Her future with the school in jeopardy tonight. Quest for survival, a Florida woman discovers the person who has the only thing she needs to live. Their chance encounter coming up. I'm just honored to be here. You know that voice, and tonight country music legend Trace Atkins is doing some good in our community. The special spot he made before taking the stage tonight as ABC Action News at 11 continues. For less. A new video tonight shows a Florida man choking and slamming a dog to the ground and a warning that some of you might find this extremely hard to watch. The man was put in handcuffs after a video was given to the Hialeah Police Department. This video you see there, an investigation reveals this was supposed to be obedience training for the one year old Siberian Husky. But as you can see, it was clearly the opposite. This video is deeply saddening people who rescue animals for a living. The same kind of pain that we would feel as if, if you imagine some big, huge guy picking you up over his head, slamming you to a floor, how would you feel? Because in South Florida, we lack empathy and compassion. They feel exactly like we feel. There is no difference. Officers say the dog was not seriously hurt and is actually back with her owners tonight. The actions of a Florida bus aid are getting national attention tonight. Mark, you don't take that head off on this bus. Take it off. Surveillance video from on board the Martin County bus shows the woman yelling at a teen over his Make America Great Again hat. The red ball caps have become a trademark of the Trump presidency. I was really confused. I was like, I can't wear this. You can't wear a hat? No, take that hat off. Take it off now. Put it in your backpack. The Martin County School was letting its students wear hats to class earlier this week. Police are looking at whether to file charges against the bus aid for grabbing it off his head and we'll make a decision sometime next week. Two Florida women who met at work now have a lifelong connection, and tonight one of them has the other to thank for giving her a gift she'll never be able to return. <laughs> so we would share stories about our families, and it just immediately, like Marianne could almost complete my story. Melanie Altizer and Marianne McGiffin's first bond was over their Italian heritage. They met working at Lee Health. Melanie is an OBGYN and Marianne a clinical supervisor. An instant connection almost as someone that I would felt like I'd known forever. She's been a gift to me that I never expected and I'm so blessed. But there is one thing Melanie did not know about Marianne. She was battling a potentially deadly disease. Found out about Marianne's kidney disease and started um, inquiring. None of Marianne's family members were eligible to be a living kidney donor. They were not a match. And she asked me what blood type I was, and I told her, oh, and she's like, well, I'm O, and I kind of smiled at her. She's like, what do I need to do to see if I can give you a kidney? The women underwent the procedure on Wednesday. There's just no words. How do you explain that, that somebody is actually saving your life? I've never been in this situation before. I'm in awe of her. She's my hero. I can't think of uh, anything that I would rather do more than to be able to um, 
give my friend whom I care very deeply about another chance at, uh, at life. The list to receive a kidney is so long that it could take some people five years. More than 100,000 people are currently waiting for a transplant. We have a link where you can sign up to become a living kidney donor. Right now, it's up on abcactionnews.com.